Welcome to the House of Ham. This is Bob, WV7W, and we're going to continue our build of the QRP Labs QDX. And today we are going to do the rest of the inductors that make up the low pass filters. These are pairs of inductors that go along with their associated capacitors to make up the low pass filters for 80 meters, 40 meters, and then a, th a third pair for 30 and 20 meters. So we'll start with L2, which is um, the 2.4 microhenry inductor for 80 meters. Um, I wound all these inductors off camera. Um, once you've seen a toroid getting wound, uh, the rest of them is kind of like watching paint dry. So I figured I would not subject you to that. So we'll go ahead and put it through there. And as always, um, we need to make sure that as we're doing it, we get a good solder joint. Now, I did tin all of these beforehand, so they solder pretty easy. So solder them up, make sure you got a good joint, and then uh, go ahead and trim off. So the next one is going to be L6. And L6 is the 2.88 microhenry um, inductor, and that's also for 80 meters. And both of these are on the T37-2 red cores. And the, what that is, is it's the um, makeup of the actual ferrite itself, the core. So those uh, numbers at the end, the two, and then the yellows are the dash six, have to do with the actual mix of the uh, inductor itself, or the uh, core itself. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do L3, which is the 1.06 microhenry uh, inductor for 40 meters. The wire length measurements in the manual give you more than enough, so do not uh, cut them a little long. I tended to cut them longer than what they gave, and I ended up a little shorter than I would have liked on the final T2 that we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, it worked out fine, but it would have been better to, uh, to not have cut them so short. The next we're going to do is L6, which is the other inductor for 40 meters. Now, I try and get these as tight to the board as I can, but that's not critical. You don't have to have it super tight, and I would be careful on pulling on these rather small wires that you don't uh, break them. You don't want to have to go and rewind a toroid. Next is L4, and this and the next inductor are the uh, remainder for 30 and 20 meters. Kind of an interesting side note is that the individual filters can be selected in the terminal application that you can use on a PC um, and allows you to actually change it. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you really know what you're doing, but it is possible. And there's even some talk about maybe being able to use that to do different bands than what are currently supported. And the final inductor for our low pass filters is L10, which is also for 20 and 30 meters, and it is a 525 nanohenry inductor. And one last point of interest is the diodes uh, D6 and D3 in the case of, of the low pass filter for 30 and 20 are the pin diodes that actually switch in each of these uh, low-pass filter networks. So that's how each of these gets turned on and brought into the circuit. So the next step is to wind the three wires which are made of the remainder of the 28 gauge magnet wire. A little shorter than I would have liked. I talked about that a few minutes ago. But basically, you put these together, and this is kind of how they recommend you do that. And you're looking for about 60 turns um, for a 20 centimeter length of wire. This is a little less than 20 centimeters, so I did about 50 turns. They say it's not critical, the actual number of turns, but this will make up the tri-filler windings for T2. 
And you'll notice I am, I've am i already wound this. Again, it's just 10 windings. It's like winding any other toroid other than it's three wires twisted together. Then what you need to do is you need to separate these out. And I'm tinning each one so that we can check and make sure that we have each of the individual wires aligned properly for soldering them to the board. Now that we got the wires tinned, we need to check the continuity between each of the leads and make sure that we have, like in the diagram, A goes to A, B goes to B, C goes to C, etc. So as you're teasing these out, make sure they you align them so they're like in the diagram. I didn't get this right the first time. What you're seeing in the video here was actually after I had originally done it. I didn't capture it the first time on camera. So it looks like I got it right the first time. That's not true. And now we got to go ahead and mount this to the board. So make sure that you keep the wires in the correct order. Um, it's, it's a little bit tricky to thread all these through and keep the ones you've already got in in as you move to the others. And I did have to trim off a couple ends that had a little solder blob on them just to make sure I got them in right. But uh, once you get them in there and you can go ahead and get it soldered up, it would not be a horrible idea. I didn't do this, but it would not be a horrible idea to go and check the continuity um, again and make sure that everything stayed aligned. Uh, once you get them in there, the uh, the three holes op opposing each other are all in the same order that they should be in. So you could check that again if, you, if you're not certain that things didn't move around on you as you were placing them. And then get them soldered up. Make sure, again, that you get a good, clean solder joint. We are going to do some continuity checks in a moment to make sure of that. But uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and make sure you got nice, clean solder joints to begin with. So let's do these continuity checks. The uh, checks themselves are the C, A, and B. Like I said, you know, you want to check those uh, now that you've got everything soldered to make sure you've got good continuity. And then we're also going to check the other points on the two integrated circuits. And I apologize again that this is a little out of frame, uh, but just pay attention to the diagram and make sure that C, Bs, and As all work, and then the three points identified with the lines all have continuity, and you'll be fine. And this will bring to a close our segment on the final toroids and T2. Next up, we're going to do the final assembly and testing of the QDX.